So here we have a true or false statement that says intermittent right bundle branch block is present below. And what we have present here is a 12 lead ECG, okay? And you, what you have to pick out is know a few things. First of all, it's asking is right bundle branch block present? So you have to know that pattern. And then what is intermittent right bundle branch block? Well, just kind of getting this intermittent out of the way, that means that it shows up and then it's not completely there, okay? So maybe in some parts of the ECG you see right bundle branch block, and then others you don't, okay? So what we're going to look for here is that, that we don't have a right bundle branch that persists from beginning all the way to end, okay? So let's take a look at here, all right? So we're not going to go through all the pathophysiology. We've had a number of videos on that, okay, that you can kind of refer to how to, where right bundle branch comes about and why we see what we see. But the main things that you want to remember is that with right bundle branch block, a few things, the right precordial lead, so V1 to V2, you want to see those RS, R prime complexes, okay, there are those rabbit ears, okay, so if you see something like this, where you have an R wave, an S wave, and an R prime, okay, you can also see what we call QR prime complexes, okay, so this is a Q wave and an R prime, and that Q wave, you see the absence of that initial R wave, because that area may have been infarcted, so that's those right precordial leads, V1 through V2, you tend to see those. Now, in the lateral limb leads, okay, or lateral leads, so that could be V5 through V6, and even 1 in AVL, you want to see pretty much these slurred S waves, okay? So we'll call them slurred or wide S waves, okay? Prolonged S wave, which is that later portion of it. So that's V5 through V6, okay? So let's take a look at this here. So our 12 lead, we have our V1 here and V2, and notice that we have R and S wave, okay? Again, an R wave and an S wave in V1 and V2. So it doesn't meet that RSR primer, those rabbit ears that you tend to see, all right? Now, if you look at V5 to V6, okay, you can see those slurred, here's V5 and V6, this slurred S wave, not as much as prevalent here, but they're there, and they're mostly prevalent in lead uh, V1 and AVL, so notice this widening of these S waves, okay, and the reason we may not see it in lead V6 may be because of lead placement, because oftentimes lead 1 and V6 should be quite similar, okay? So when you notice that you have these slurred S waves in lead 1, not in V6, so something may be going on, okay? And there certainly is. That's why we have these rhythm strips, and you'll see these bottom here at the two, these bottom two ones, okay? So we have lead 2 and V1, and what I want you to notice in V1 specifically is that these complexes from here to here are different from those that follow, okay? So notice that we have these RS, R prime complexes, okay? That we said we may see in right bundle branch block. However, as you continue through, you start to see these RS complexes, okay? Going through. And you should remember that things have a temporal relationship on the ECG, meaning that this here, this RS complex, is the same one that we see down here, okay? If we draw a line, and that's why we're not seeing them, these here show up in lead V1, okay? Because if you can imagine, this is V1 starting around five seconds halfway through our ECG, but this here in V1 is at zero seconds, okay? So let's just clear that up here so you can kind of see that. So notice that in V1 we have early on in the ECG, so here's V1, we have these RSR prime complexes showing up, and then all of a sudden, right here, we see change to normal complexes, okay? And that's why up here in V1, we see those initial same ones, these RS complexes that are the same down here, all right? So you have to keep that in mind because what we see early on here are these RSR prime complexes. And if you look up here at lead one, you also see those slurred S waves. However, here you don't because these are normal complexes, all right? So because of that, you're looking here, okay? And in AVL, the slurred S waves, and you look below, you still see those RSR prime that in fact is right bundle branch block, okay? And the reason it's intermittent is because it doesn't last throughout, okay? So we call that intermittent, okay? Right bundle branch block. You don't always catch this, but when you do, it's quite fascinating. On this ECG, uh, we certainly did, okay? So again, this is a true or false asking if intermittent right bundle branch block 
is present and we see this, okay? So this is a really important one, just to know the basics, make sure you factor in all of the ECG. So this answer is certainly true. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below if you like what we're doing. In fact, many of you have asked how you could help us out. Really, the best way you could do is simply subscribe and share this resource with your friends. And you get free access to more than 300 videos. There is also a community of over 270,000 of us like-minded individuals on Facebook. So stop over and join the EKG Guys uh, Facebook community. Many of you have also asked some questions. Leave them below or share them on Facebook and we can try to answer them with a short video so everyone else can learn. We also have a number of new courses with corresponding videos coming out soon, so stay tuned for those. Last but certainly not least, your feedback is incredibly helpful and your kind words are always an encouragement on those long days. So let us know how we're doing. Thank you again for your support. It is truly appreciated. We're the largest, fastest growing EKG resource in the world.